So this particular character, it's a naturally an alien robot. I'd most likely fit him into the category of an infogloid. Probably one of the bad guys. Isaac is 20 years old. He was diagnosed with autism when he was three. He's interested in anything that has to do with science fiction. No infogloid is complete without its big glowing red eye. I think the first question parents have is why? Why does my child have autism? What caused the autism? Seven. All parents want their children to be born healthy and have good lives. <laughs> but every day, children are born with little understood developmental disorders, which present perplexing medical mysteries. Now, the human brain is probably the most complex structure in the universe. And to form, it requires many millions of cell divisions, of genetic replications being done correctly. It's an incredibly complex dance to form the human brain. And if anything goes wrong in any way, because a gene is expressed in the wrong way, or there's an insult that happens at the right time or in the wrong way, then things go wrong. And the baby's brain doesn't develop as it should. Until recently, researchers could only hypothesize about the causes of most childhood brain disorders. Imaging scans could provide some information, but scientists needed to see genetic variations, and now they have the capability to do it. The Human Genome Project was this effort that ended 10 years ago now to sequence the human genome. And once we had that sequence in hand, we're able to look at genetic variation among individuals in ways we never could before. We can take brains from individuals who have a particular condition and brains from people who, for example, died in a car accident or from drowning but didn't have a disease, and we can compare them. We can compare them in different ways, and one way is to look at the DNA itself and sequence it and compare, and that's something we couldn't do before. Technologically, it wasn't possible, but now we can. With these new molecular research frontiers and advances in technology, scientists are making long-awaited breakthroughs. We recently had a thrilling moment of making a discovery in finding a gene mutation that can account for this disease, Sturge Weber syndrome. This discovery is really very, very important because prior to understanding what gene caused this, we really had no idea what caused Sturge Weber syndrome. It wasn't like a needle in a haystack, it was like a needle in a million haystacks. And this one change, we believe, accounts for Sturge Weber syndrome. And this is just a thrilling moment. To unravel the perplexing medical mysteries of childhood brain disorders, scientists need to study human brain tissue donated by families. There's another one of Nathan. For Nathan's mom, love for her son, born with cocaine syndrome, and her desire to help families in the future motivated her decision to donate the tissue. That was hard for me to actually make that decision to um, donate his, his tissue, his brain. Um, but um, I, I knew from a research perspective and from a, a logical, I want to help people in the future perspective, that was an easy decision. A family's decision to donate brain tissue is a gift and an enormous gift that may help other families in the future. Donations to the University of Maryland Brain and Tissue Bank are making these discoveries possible. It's a team effort between the families, the researchers, and the brain bank. If he were the one making the decision, he would have made the same decision I made in hopes that he could help his, his, the same kids that with CS. Or it is bigger than that, because I think as we figure out the puzzle of all these genetic diseases, it's going to you know, help all the kids. Now, more than ever, families, tissue banks, and researchers working together can change the world for generations to come. If families and researchers join together, we are going to be able to make differences in the lives of children like we've never been able to do before. What do you think? Do you think there's going to be a cure for autism? There are many ways for families to participate in research and help scientists understand and find treatments for children born with brain disorders. I 
have been trained in pediatrics and my intentions were not to go into autism. However, being a mom of a child with autism and realizing that there wasn't a lot known by, about the disorder, that's how I got involved. The goal is simply to get every single family member involved in research. And we realize, you know, some of what we learn in the future may not help our child, but maybe it'll help other people's children.